All right, so let's talk about how do you actually take a, a buyer client that you have right now and then leverage that buyer client to actually go out into the marketplace to secure listings. It's a question we often get with agents uh, that we coach. And so I thought we would spend today's episode talking about exactly how to do that. So to tee this up, first and foremost, there's two things I want the audience to consider. Number one is what we're going to teach you in today's episode will allow you to bring a tangible value offer to your buyer clients that perhaps, I don't know if this is true or not, but perhaps you've struggled to do to differentiate yourself in the past. You know, when I ask agents, Dominic and, and Ben, hey, when you're in a buyer consultation, because we list buyers the same way we list sellers, when you're at a buyer consultation, what is your unique value proposition to a buyer? And what do you think they say every time? It sounds very similar to what every agent says. So in this episode, it will allow agents to have exactly that. In order to be better, you must be different. So I'm going to give, we're going to give agents exactly that. That's number one. And then number two, the other thing to consider as we're going through today's conversation is I want the audience, I want you guys to imagine for a second that with your prospecting efforts as you're having conversations with different homeowners, just imagine for a second that you actually had the buyer for every single homeowner's property as you are making a prospecting phone call. It's just so powerful to even think that through. It makes prospecting like a no-brainer because the challenge is the finding of the buyer. Well, in this context, that's exactly what we're talking about. So I'm going to start off with number one on my list. And I think that's a good way to do it. We'll grab everyone's kind of number one, and then we'll go on to number two. Every time I have a client, I am my value. One of my value offers to them is my off market database. It's like one of the greatest things we can bring to a buyer client in a low inventory market where there's multiple offers most of the time on anything decent out there. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is. I'm going to look at all the expired listings, withdrawn listings, canceled listings that are in the areas that fit the criteria of the buyer. And I'm going to contact those people first. And it's amazing how many deals you could put together with just that first tactic alone. Because what, what are we doing? We're, we're essentially paying, playing matchmaker with exactly what that homeowner wanted. And we give the buyer exactly what they want with the home that they want without having to compete. And oh, by the way, if that home doesn't work, now you are in relationship with the homeowner to potentially win the listing through this experience. So that's the first tactic that I had written down. Um, Dominic, let's go to you. What, uh, what's one thing that you're doing to leverage buyer clients into getting listings? Yeah, we're actually doing it right now. We're in contract with a deal like that right now that was an expired listing that came off the market actually two years ago at the height of the market. And yeah, I mean, look, you just laid out the plan right there. We start with the lowest hanging fruit, which are people that have had a desire sometime in the recent past to make a move and reach out, touch those people and see if that desire still exists or has come up again and see if we can play matchmaker and of course i'm sure you're gonna get into the nitty-gritty about how we do that but yeah we're i mean we're actually literally under contract with one of those right now it's amazing it's amazing yeah. ben your thoughts on this first point yeah I, I i'm on the same page i i start with a list whether it's using old expired withdrawn or just going through a broker or there's a variety of different ways to um just see what is available in the market that isn't currently listed that I can present and see what is of interest. And then we can kind of get into the tactical about how to approach them. But that's where I yeah. would start. Absolutely. Yeah. If we talk about, when we talk about value, right? Price is what you pay, value is what you get. You know, your compensation is directly correlated to the amount of value you offer the marketplace. 
So, right, I mean, if you can do what we're talking about is take a buyer client and go find them the property that is not listed on the open market, well, certainly there's a case to be made for a uh, what I call value pricing when it comes to your compensation, right? It's getting the seller and the buyer exactly what they both want. And then because you've helped these two parties win, you win as, uh, as, an, uh, as a result. So you get to earn more money doing this too, right? Now, uh, let's talk about tactically how you're going to communicate this, right? And then we'll talk about a couple other things. So the easiest thing is to just reach out to them directly, right? You can call them, you can text them, you can send them a message on social media and simply say, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, looks like you were on the market a year ago, six months ago, two years ago. And I actually uh, was researching my database and we have a buyer client that seems to be perfect for your home and i just didn't know if if selling was still on the table or not it's the easiest way to reach out to these people and so you could do the same thing the same message through uh direct mail i have a buyer for your home letter or better yet handwritten card is probably one of the best ways to get your phone to ring if you actually have a buyer client for the potential property so the messaging is i have a buyer for your home and this is exactly what homeowners want to talk about. What they do not want to talk about is listing their home for sale, right? That's why the number one objection you get when prospecting is, do you have a buyer? Well, guess what? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So Dominic, let me go back to you from a scripting perspective. Um, when we look at the tactics on doing this, um, what do you want to add or how would you but what would you add when it comes to communicating with the property owner? Yep. So um, several times that this has come to fruition, well, the first communication I get back from a homeowner is a text with a snapshot of a letter or card that I sent them. And it says, do you still have this buyer? Yeah. Huh. Okay. No, no problem. That that's how it usually plays out. Sometimes it plays out in the way where somebody said, Hey, Dominic, I want to live in the river run community. We can spend up to 1.5 million. We need this, 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 and this that's easy. It's the easiest prospecting phone call you can make in this business. Hey, I've got a buyer that's fully approved or a buyer that's ready with cash. They'd love to live in your community. And uh, I just didn't know if if you were in a position to take advantage of this. Have you have you considered making a move at all? Yeah, love it. And then let them talk, right? People are like, no, no, no. And my last question is, well, listen, it might not be right for you. I don't suppose, and we've talked to anybody in in your neighborhood that might be thinking of making a move that this could be a good fit for. Oh yeah, you know the Smiths three doors down. They've had a pod in front of their house for the last three weeks, and, and they've been talking about moving. You might want to give them a call. Should they sometimes give you the number? Yeah. Great. Yeah. I, I think the, the key here that has served me well is just keeping in mind the fact that exactly what you said, Brandon, and I just want to double down on it, is make it about them, not about you. So when you call and try and get a listing, it's about they perceive it about you. But if you can call and add value, because what does a seller want? A buyer. And you calling and adding value through that, I think that is the key to, to keep in mind and the principle that will, will serve you the best. Yeah. And so, again, just kind of going one layer deeper on this conversation, it has to come from uh, exactly what, what Ben was just saying, right? Which is, um, listen, I've got a client. Um, they're, they're, uh, you don't have to get into details, but I've got a client, you, you want to make it real, right? I've got a client that's transferring, they're upsizing, downsizing. Um, they've got a new job at such and such, and they're looking to move into river falls neighborhood. And I was just doing some research. I saw that you guys were looking to sell a couple of years ago for whatever reason. I don't know if it sold or not. Um, did you guys end up selling? No. Well, listen, this could be a good fit where you don't have to kind of go through the headache of listing it again. 
if you guys were thinking about selling. And it's exactly what Ben said. It's it's a service call. It's a service contact. And so this is on the behalf of the homeowner to make it easy for them and on behalf of your client to make it easier on them. And it's most of the time received a lot better than when you're reaching out for a listing. So that's number one. Number two, now we're gonna do the same thing with any potential for sale by owners. So we talked about, okay, the low hanging fruit, let's go after any, we're just gonna do a simple search, expired, cancel, withdrawn. Then next, we're gonna look at any for sale by owner opportunities, right? This is a great, great way to initiate conversations with for sale by owners who are the only prospect in our industry that has their hand raised that are actively selling the home. So this is exactly what most for sale by owners are hoping to have happen. They, most of them, I would say in, in all the years I've been doing this, 98, 99% of the for sale by owners I've ever talked to say that they are open to working with an agent if they brought them a buyer. 98, 99% of them. Most of them are open to that. And this is a great opportunity for you. So if you have a for sale by owner that's in the marketplace where the buyer's looking and it potentially could be a fit for the buyer, what a great way to not only initiate conversation, but to schedule an actual in-person showing with your buyer, right? Meet the seller. And that's creating real tangible value for the for sale by owner. And again, yet your buyer, they're going to see homes that are not listed on the market where they have to compete with all the other buyers. And then if that home obviously doesn't does work, boom, you're in, you're in good shape. If it does not work, now we're in relationship with the for sale by owner to give ourselves an opportunity to serve them at a higher level to handle the sale of their home. Dominic, talk to us about for sale by owners. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're exactly right. And the opportunity to bring a client to a for sale by owner is, is breaking the ice with exactly what it is that they're looking for. And yeah, I, I would submit to you that far more often than not, in any of these cases, but especially with a for sale by owner, the buyer that you bring isn't going to be the fit for that property. But what you're demonstrating in this case, specifically to the for sale by owner is, holy smokes, this agent knows how to go out and bust ass. He's just not putting a sign on the ground and praying for other people to make it happen for him, which of course is the perception that most people have of real estate agents. So doing this kind of work in this case with the for sale by owner opens their eyes to the fact that this person's different. They're different, they're working to make it happen. And you know what, if I can't get this done on my own, I'm at least gonna talk to that guy. Yeah, yeah. And I go back to offering value to the buyer, right? I mean, again, um, the perception of the consumer to your point is, well, I just, me, the buyer, I'm the one finding the home most of the time, bringing it to your attention to say, hey, can you schedule a showing on this? This inverts that. This is you, the agent, saying, listen, I've got my off-market database. One of the first things I'm going to do, Mr. Buyer, is I'm going to try to find a, a property that is the perfect fit at the best price with zero competition. And that is exactly what every buyer wants. That's what every buyer wants. And so you get to deliver on that. All right, last thing on my list, and then we can add some stuff to you guys. Now we're going to go neighborhood specific. So we talked about expireds, cancel, withdrawn. We're talking about for sale by owners. Now, you, to me, this is the most valuable. So I'm talking with my buyer client through follow-up, through a buyer consultation. We're having a cup of coffee. We're grabbing a dinner, whatever. And I say, dude, Dominic, if you could just wave a wand and, and pick the neighborhood and where you want to live, because typically you, you're... you're you're whittling it down to an area, right? Like a city, four bedroom, two and a half bath in this city, in this school district. Let's go even deeper. If you could pick the perfect neighborhood where you wanted to live, which neighborhood would it be? Now I can go hyper, hyper local neighborhood domination mode where I'm knocking on all of these doors with I have a buyer script. Certainly my handwritten card, I have a buyer script, certainly phone calls, all of it. And now I'm going, I can be more of a sniper mode and really pinpoint the neighborhood that my buyer wants to live in. And um, this for me has actually worked better than the, the first two because you can't always pick where the expired or the for sale by owner is. You're going to have some in your city. But now if they can pick the neighborhood, 
Um, I've even had, I've even had <laughs> some clients not only tell me the neighborhood, but I want you to pick the house you want to live in. Yeah. Because now I can just go directly to that homeowner and say, I, your house would be phenomenal for my client. We talked about this, I don't know, a year ago on the show, but that's how most lake homes are sold. Yep. Most lake homes never have to be listed because most of them have 10 or 15 buyers who say, hey, if you ever want to sell this, we'd love to buy it. That's the idea with this. It's like, all right, drive through this neighborhood. Are there some streets that you really love? Give me your top three to five homes that you're interested in in that neighborhood and let me go to work. And now we're, we're creating real tangible value in the marketplace. Dominic, uh, what is your experience with that or what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm just chuckling to myself here because I've got one of those playing out like right now. I, I was on a call before this podcast where a buyer asked me for a very specific part of town that's inventory never comes up on homes are back up to the foothills and so i'm going to be i'm going to actually be doing this today that's why i'm chuckling so the strategy of course is to go through that neighborhood to look up first of all anybody that came off the market unsold anybody no nope, fizzbos don't show up in that market but look for people that tried to sell right that's number one and call them number two is going to be to write them a handwritten note card saying hey I've got these buyers and you, you know the buyer, the buyer note and call again. And then I'm gonna go door knock the specific homes that are right up against the foothills and see if we can pry out a listing. And, and my, my experience has been, I'm gonna re, I can't reiterate this enough, is that when you are demonstrating in this case to your buyers now, there's no question of value. Most of the time they end up buying something that comes to the market. But in the meantime, while you're looking, there's like, man, my guy's I mean, sending me a property every other day that's not on the market and he hasn't found us the right one, but he's working for us. He's doing something for for us instead of us just going on Zillow and sending him stuff. He's he's out there busting butt for us. And both sides see this. The potential seller sees it and the buyer sees it. And that ultimately is what sh allows you to show value. 100%. And we're, this won't be a full buyer training podcast, but I do want to mention a couple of things real quick, Ben, is we we want to be the one proactively reaching out to our buyer clients every single week. And whether you're providing them with an off-market opportunity or on-market opportunity, you want to be the one who does it first. So that's a side note. If anybody you're working with buyers, you want to provide value, call your buyers every Monday, because they've been on the internet all weekend to say, hey, there's three or four homes I think that could be a really good fit. Would love to get them on the calendar to show them to you guys this week. That's a separate thing. Now, I do want to also add, you want to talk about getting excited around prospecting. You want to talk about like yeah. getting over your fear of prospecting. This is how you do it. All of you have a client whether they're gonna, whether they're a serious buyer or uh, somebody who's just getting started, you could still leverage that client to help you get over the fear of knocking doors and making phone calls. Because, like Dominic said at the beginning of the show, this is the easiest conversation to have. It is a call of service. You're calling the homeowner and offering exactly what they want. You see, the trouble is with prospecting, where it becomes more difficult is when you don't have the buyer. Now you need a whole bunch of skills, there's a whole bunch of rejection to deal with. But when you have a buyer, it makes this entire process easy. And I get excited. I get excited when I have a client who says, listen, I'm, I'm trying to get me into Steamboat. Like, I love that neighborhood, just get us in there. Oh, I'm all over it. I am all over prospecting inside of that Steamboat neighborhood because I have the thing, the bag of money that the sellers can 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 get. I just need somebody to say, yep, I want the money. And then I uh, that's why I'm so excited about this topic because it makes the process of proactive lead generation, the, all the head trash and all the emotional baggage that comes with it, it makes that go away. Your thoughts on that, Ben? Yeah, I'll just add one thing. I, I think it's it almost becomes like a dance where um, you're, you're, it, it's like, it, when I say a dance, it, it, it almost happens at the same time where you can be prospecting 
and um, have these open conversations with people that, hey, in the future, if I have another buyer, you know, what, what would cause you to move? What needs to happen for this to happen? And then over time, you, you build these lists and you have these niches, these pockets that you really like to work. And then somebody pops up, you, you have a conversation with somebody, hey, you know, I've been thinking about moving. I would really like to be in X, Y, Z. And all of a sudden, you're just going into your list of pocket listings, essentially, of people that are like, hey, I would sell. I don't want to list if this happens. And then it's just a game of matchmaker. Um, and that's what we've seen you know, happen with these lake properties. I do a lot of that with investment properties. Um, so I just think it's it's like it's just a dance. It's always happening. And it it's just kind of a trigger in connecting people. Yeah. You know, it, it, you're right. I mean, I know that's how you've done a lot of your business, how I do a lot of my business. Dominic, you're doing the same thing. Um, you know, add the people to this list that are most motivated, most likely to want to sell. Like, so we can't forget the absentee owners in these neighborhoods. I mean, these are <laughs> these these are people, right, Dominic? These are people. I was just I'm waiting to say that. But yes, go ahead. Go, go, add it. Go ahead, Dominic. Yes, no yes, emotion. Cool. So what? Yeah. So this is great. When you're calling through your absentee owners, a lot of times that they say, no, we have no interest in selling, right? The final question for all of these absentee owner clients that we're calling should be, well, listen, before I let you go, would you consider yourself a buyer if the right deal came along? Well, yes, I would. Oh, well, what, what would you be looking for if, if you could... If you could snap your fingers and produce the exact property you're looking for, what would it be? And I'm going to give you criteria. And then I'm going to go into my CRM and I'm going to type in, I'm going to put that person in my CRM as investor slash buyer. Now, when I'm making my calls to for sale by owners, if I see something, I think, oh, guess what? I might have a buyer for this property. There's a Spot whole, on. yeah, yeah. I forgot about that's, that. That, that, that you, you, you nailed it. I mean, that's how you create buyers out of thin air. It's like, you know, um, you can do like, we, we don't talk often about buyer lead generation through outbound prospecting, but it's actually really simple. Like that's right. everyone you're talking to is, you know, are you thinking about, uh, a lot of people are like, well, I, I can't find anything. Well, what are you looking for? You know, that that's another huge objection when you're circle prospecting or anybody. The biggest objection is we would love to move, but we can't find anywhere to go, absentee owner or not. And it's like, well, cool. Tell me what you're looking for. I actually specialize in helping my clients find properties that are not listed. And so tell me what you want and let me go to work for you. And you can just leverage that, whether they ever do anything or not, right? I just want to make this clear. This episode is about leveraging a human that would like to purchase something for you to leverage that in providing value with your prospecting efforts to secure listings, right? And so uh, it allows you to get into these conversations much, much easier than I think what vast majority of people are doing is having to contact homeowners direct and try to win a listing. This is way, way easier. In fact, I'm going to add one more piece that I wasn't planning on adding, I'll tell you where we've had a lot of success with this is as the buyer, as yeah, so the buyer. You stole the words out of my mouth. Yeah. So for years, for years, and when I'm coaching a more seasoned or more, uh, yeah, more seasoned real estate salesperson, that is just at a uh, different part of their business. So we'll use this as our primary prospecting strategy, but we're approaching it as the buyer first. So anybody who has real estate as part of their wealth creation plan, well, we're gonna we're gonna approach every conversation as the buyer first. So every expired, every for sale by owner, every circle prospecting, every absentee owner as the buyer, your yourself. And so we approach that to purchase the property first. And if you can't get the property at 20, 30, 40% off retail, then obviously we can help them list the property at retail or more. And so that has been another strategy that has really helped a lot over the years. But yeah, I know, Ben, you're big into that too. Yeah, let me just add a couple. So that's my secret weapon. Um, and, you know, it, it didn't take long, but once you wrap your head around 
just the simple fact of if isn't it fair to consider that if the price is right, you absolutely have a buyer, right? 100%. Because the money's easy. It's, it's all about the, and I'm putting, you know, coming more from an investor, right? We talk a lot about, you know, single family and it's more emotional, right? But if, if the deal is right, the money is the easiest thing to find. So coming into it, you know, I'm always considering, okay, do I want to buy this? So just to your point, I'm the buyer. If I don't want to buy it, I've got my 10 guys that I know will buy it that I can send it to. And then if, if it still doesn't fit that, now we're just listing and selling it for them on the open market. It, it's so, not as so, much of a numbers game. Oh, let me jump in. So let me just explain what he's, let me just go deeper what he's talking about. Like, so I'm a huge Porsche 911 guy, okay? So if you look, this is exactly what Ben's saying. Most, well, I don't know what people's financial uh, situations are, of course, but a, a brand new Porsche right now is a two-year wait and we'll call it 150K, okay? So what Ben said is exactly right. A lot of people don't have 150K to buy a brand new Porsche 911. Fine. What if a 2024 Porsche 911 came into your marketplace and it was 52 grand? Nothing was wrong with it. It was nothing wrong. Now, it's not a question of do you want to buy? Can it's you just find the money because the numbers make sense, right? That's what we're talking about. That's why we say price is what you pay, value is what you get. And so there's real tangible value, right? And so when you're presented with an opportunity like that, when the price makes sense, no, I wasn't in the market to buy a Porsche 911. I wasn't in the market to buy a three bedroom, two and a half bath uh, uh, home in Boise, Idaho. But shit, if I can get it for 175, and it's a retail property of 300, I will find the money. I'll, I'll make it happen for sure. Ben, that's what you're talking about. So you're always the buyer. That's what that's what I think a lot of people forget. You're in real estate. You have a front row seat. You have a front row seat, hot off the press with opportunities of real estate hitting the market. You should first be the one to say, how can I capitalize on this first? before being a listing agent, before being a realtor, let's, how do I actually build wealth long-term? So that's what we're talking about. Dominic, I know you're and, itching. And I'll just add one here. more thing on that. Like I'll just ahead. add one more thing. So to your point, the way you make money in real estate, there's three ways. You find the deal, you have the money, or you manage it. And the two hardest things are finding the deal. Those are the people that make the most money, the people that find the deal and the people that bring the money. So if you have, you're making a ton of money because you're following what Brandon says and you're pounding the pavement, finding the deals, the third one is super easy, right? Um, and if you're finding the deals, you can also find other people with the money. So th that's all. I just, we could talk about this forever. I don't have anything to add, to add. I was just laughing because all the stuff I've just seen it play out so many times. Like you're just literally saying what what plays out in the marketplace. I mean, yeah, verbatim.